This is a new brush I just prepped, the 14. A nice round bead. And this will get flatter over time. I just prepped this, so over time, the more I use it, the more I train it, it'll get flatter and flatter based on how I train it. And of course, it's a nice Kalinsky. Remember, C curve, you gotta be careful. You gotta make sure that the, the distribution of powder is even, or your nail is gonna look wide as hell. Last thing you wanna do is have your nails look stupid wide, okay guys? The problem is, a lot of times when people are using C-curve tips, they're just applying a lot of acrylic all over. And it's a one note, like really, really thick. You have to really control the thickness so that it's not gonna look wide, it's gonna look more tapered, you see that? I'm gonna shape while I work. That's my first bead, that's my base bead. Now I'm gonna do my cuticle bead and my apex bead, okay? Everything's nice and shaped, nice and tapered, just the way I want it. This is my second bead. I'm gonna give it some time. I'm gonna nudge it up to the cuticle area. I very pride myself in my application. I spent a lot of my years just doing applications, no design. So yes, I perfected or my technique or you know my ability to advocate very, very, you know, in a way unique to me, but also something that I can reteach. A lot of you guys learn from my videos, that's perfectly fine. I appreciate the support with the likes and shares and my Instagram, follow my Instagram, I appreciate that. But for those students that take my classes that want that hands-on experience, the mentorship you're more than welcome and now we see we have even distribution of the nail look how beautiful that looks can't really complain right guys structure consistency shape everything all in one and the monomer I'm using is my monomer my EMA all-purpose monomer this monomer pretty much works with everything possible I just sell acrylic. I don't sell acrylic because I have such great sponsors that sponsor me. Um, that'll be my last thing I do on my list. But for now, I sell everything else. I'm gonna appreciate all your support. Nowdeadshop.com. Like I said, I do a nice two bead process. And please do join me for Q&As around 10, 30, 11 Eastern, sometimes a little bit later than 11 Eastern. If you got nothing to do, get a glass of wine, get something to drink, you know, and talk to me, ask me questions. Sometimes I miss questions while I'm working. Um, so you can ask me those questions during those Q&As when I'm not working, I'm just answering questions, okay? So if you guys wanna stop by the Q&As, Eastern time, 10, 30, 11, around there, sometimes even 11.30 if I'm running a little late. And I have a glass of wine and I just talk about nails. And you know, we have really good conversations. Appreciate your support there also, okay guys? Making sure that the sides are nice and even. And everything's shaped well. Um, if you guys have people, there's, there are my students in here that are answering questions for me. Don't mind them. They're just assisting me. Thank you so much, Jasmine Freeman. Um, yes, you can DM me and I'll send information on classes, okay, guys? Um, I will post a flyer soon so they do get filled up pretty quick. Um, a lot of my students are in here. So if you guys have any questions about classes, you can go to my Instagram and watch my highlights. Or you can ask my students, you know. I like to do highlights of my classes um, in my Instagram. Just give you guys the experience of what the classes are like. A lot of times you guys never been to a class, not like mine anyway, a two day workshop where you're gonna be doing hands on for eight, seven to eight hours a day. Ask my students, it's a lot of work, but it's, it's effective. And you get some pretty good gifts. And I think it's worth the money and the investment. And if I'm coming closer near your city, you should definitely take advantage of that because I do tours so I don't go to the same place over and over. I travel with a very, very amazing team, Voltino and Vina. 
You guys know who Votino is. He's an amazing artist. So if you do your technique consistently, generally every time you should be having the same results, right? Same results. This one I may build a little bit more apex. Just a little bit more. Kissimmee, Orlando, I do actually. I have a June 7th and 8th in Orlando class, private class. You can definitely DM me for that. That's for my locals because I'm from Orlando, so I host local classes all the time. I'm on tour, but sometimes my locals, I would hate to make them travel with me. So I do um, pretty much uh, Orlando private classes, which are smaller classes with me and about 10 to 14 students. Um, and that's for my local. So you're in luck there, um, Sonia. I think I have a few seats left in my Orlando class, so you can definitely DM me and I'll send you information of that. But Vegas, Denver, and San Jose, California. You guys want the experience? Check. Even if you're just interested, check out my Instagram. Check out my highlights. Look through all my classes. You know, I want to have that you know, pre-experience, like window shop. Okay. Secure your seat if you're really serious about your career. We teach more than just nails. We teach you how to you know, take pictures. We teach you how to build clientele. We teach you a lot of things. How to be successful like us. I've taught over 500 students. So I have a lot of feedback from them. When will you be coming to Tampa? I'm from Florida, guys. I'm in Orlando. I do private classes in Orlando all the time. So DM me if you're in Florida. <laughs> you are in luck. You know, you have access to me. Unlike other states without the wait, Florida gets, um, every month they get a private class. So you, you Floridians, Tampa, you're like really next door to Orlando. It shouldn't even be a second thought for you. You should be securing that seat because it's going to be filled up soon. Connecticut, I have a few seats left in Connecticut also. Milford, Connecticut. It's a very unique area, okay? That means that you guys from the Jersey, uh, you know, uh, New York, that missed my, our New York class. That's your chance, okay? Get in that class. It's a very 3D focus. It's me, Vina, and Cheryl Wong. Very amazing class. How many times am I gonna come to Connecticut? Not often, so if you're there, take advantage of that, okay? Our sponsor kits are pretty nice. You get 10 chisel powder. Well, you get 15, 16 powders in general, and then you get all the other goodies and stuff. It's just amazing. Consistent application, you guys see that? Consistency. And this means I'm doing the same thing over and over again. Nothing changing. Would you ever come to UK to teach? Um, I would if it, it was if, if it's allowed. It's not allowed, guys. International travels for that stuff is not allowed right now. But probably when international happens, I'll probably go to Canada, then UK, and then, of course, move on from there. Um, uh, monthly, but it depends on, on my month, uh, on, on my schedule also. So right now as June 7th and 8th is my next one. So I'm not sure if I'm going to have another one unless I get enough interest. I don't host them unless I get at least five to six interested first. But this one is about maybe a few seats left in this Orlando class right here. So definitely don't slack. I mean, what's the, if you're in Orlando right now, it's two days, Monday, Tuesday, 7th and 8th. Take advantage of it because you never know when it's going to be back. I can't make any promises on Orlando classes, but I've had I've hosted a few so far. So, like I said, you may be ready in April, but there not, might not be enough people in April to have to host a class. Come back to New York, well, Ky Kyra. You can definitely come down to CT to see me. I I believe. Um, the reason why I didn't like New York as much as I did because I love the city. I love the students. I didn't like the traffic. I didn't like the expenses. I didn't like um how hard it was to get. Uh, parking and how, how, how much how expensive it was for 
uh, my students to get housing. Um, so I think going out of the city, traveling to CT, you definitely guys will definitely have a better experience. Um, it'll be cheaper for you guys to find housing. And I feel like that's what I'm gonna do from now on with New York, because it's just too expensive to do it in the city. I'm sorry, I love New York, but it's definitely not a place to host a nail class and have, you know, 20, 30 students come. See, this is a little bit flat. I'm gonna add a little bit more apex to this. You always add on, but you can never take off. So be mindful how much powder you're using, okay? It's easier to add on than to remove. When you're removing it, oof. See? Just like that, simple enough. I appreciate you guys share um, the, the live, guys. Um, even if not, even not to your group, share it to your, your personal Facebook. You may have a lot of nail friends that are interested in this stuff, and it may help them, okay? We should help each other by sharing the good content. And I believe my content is pretty well-versed. You're amazing. You're amazing with that part. <laughs> Thank you, Jennifer. Um, come on, you guys are my student. Another Chicago class? I think uh, Vina wanted another Chicago class, but that's not until after we're done with our West Coast tour. So until we're finished with um, uh, San Jose, Denver, and Vegas, and when we come back, it would probably be a master class, the first thing we do. Um, this part, chisel powder, uh, 15B, oh, uh, 15 OMB um, is a uh, ombre, one of the ombre powders. Let me see. OM15B. By chisel. You in Vegas? No, I'm in Orlando, but I have my Vegas class in July. When are you gonna come back to Philly? Um, I don't think anytime soon. I told many states I have to come back to. Um, Philly and probably not uh, before. I would have to revisit Houston and Chicago and Atlanta before I do Philly again. Like I said, if you're in Philly, you're definitely close to Connecticut. You guys have to understand, I'm on tour. If I'm close to your state, you need to take advantage of that. Make a trip. I'm traveling across the nation for you. You can make a two, three hour trip for me, I believe, right? To better yourself, I think it's a worth inve worthy investment. I guarantee you'll get your, your investment worth and more from the class. I don't have to guarantee you. Ask some of my students, they're in here right now. I've hunt There's probably like 50 or 60 of them sitting in here right now. And to what Jennifer, my, my, my student, Jungle said, I'm amazing with this powder. It's because this powder works so well with my monomer and I've been using it so much that I'm so used to it right now. That's why when you start using one powder, that's why um, you, guys, you get like really, 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 really good with it. You'll be able to like get the timing down and everything down. Ooh, look at that. Mm. That's one hand down, guys. Look how flawless that looks, right? Barely have to even shape. Slap top go on and center off. Give me a hundred dollars. When you do classes, when do your classes, when do your classes do you take appointments in between? Cause no, I don't. I barely have time to even rest. You guys understand um, when I teach a class, it's very mentally straining. I don't show it because as a, as a, the teacher you don't want to show that you you know sh stress but um, you are responsible for a lot of students so I don't have the mental capacity to be doing clients but you know I try to stay strong I try to stay positive and 
make sure that my students get the best of me. I don't want to be distracted. That's why during classes, I don't even respond to DMs or anything like that. Um, I do all that after I get back home because I want to be completely focused on the class and for my students. Um, I always say that because during classes, I always get hundreds and hundreds of DMs and people think I'm ignoring them. I'm like, no, I'm not. I just don't respond to any DMs while I'm teaching class, while I'm traveling for class. It keeps my mind clear so that I can stay focused on what I'm teaching and my students. And they deserve that, my undivided attention. See that? Now I need a little bit more of my monomer. I'm going to add a little bit more. I'm not going to add too much. So a little bit more. Yes, it's health also for me. Yeah, you're right. One, two, three. My monitor is the three second rule. This is a medium setting monomer, my monomer. So please understand that it's not gonna be like super, super runny, but it definitely will give you time to work with it. See that? I'm still able to work with it. Um, doesn't mean that it's gonna dry up on you. It's mediums and it's, it sets a little bit quicker than like me a Secret Valentino Young Nails, but it'll give you time to mold it. I like that because I don't like things runny. I like to be able to mold. And this gives me the time to mold, but it doesn't mean that I have all the time in the world like I have with those other monomers. But just enough time for my technique, is that what I need? Do you guys see where I'm missing a little potter here? Right there. And that's an easy remedy, just a little bit of a bead here. Give me the apex right there. Remember, you can always add on, but you can never remove. So make sure you don't overdo the powder, okay? If you overdo it, you gotta remove it. Don't overdo it, because you gotta remove it. Ooh, that sounds nice. There you guys go, see? Easy fix. And make sure you slope out from the cuticle area, okay? You should not have acrylic protruding right here. Definitely the best monomer. Thank you, Jess. You'll be there. I need that dish. Um, yeah, the dish is on there right now. The new dampening dish are available. One, two, three. See that marbling? It's ready. You see how it's dried, it's not running, but I'm able to use my brush and lightly move it. I like to be in control of my powder. And you see I'm brushing the sides in because I don't want it too thick on the sides here. This is a C-curve tip, so the last thing I want to do is have thick sidewalls because that means it'll take away from my tapered look. Most of the time you're using C-curve tips, you want that straight tapered look, okay? Con chị hả? Dạ, chị làm đi, cho nó chơi. Nó không sao. Tưởng nó khách nó Ok, không sao. The five one safety was great. And fun. Ok. The five one bit what? Oh yeah, my five one. I'm gonna honest with you, my five ones are the best bits. Y'all need to invest into that. <laughs> Before it goes out of stock again. They're so good. Like everyone, everybody that's used them, like just amazed by them. You know why? Because much is custom. It's not like cookie cutter. You guys know what cookie cutter is? When it sells the same thing? No, I have to find something different, unique to make it sure they add to it. Yes, I pay a little bit more because I have to change the design, but if I'm gonna put my name on it, it's gotta be. It, I don't want. I don't want a cookie cutter. I don't want everybody to have it. Yes, the way I have it cut, the tooth pattern is completely different. It's unique. Um, not recommended, but recommended by me though. Cause that's how I like it. And everybody that see me use it, they love it too, so. 
yes there's a lot of times you can buy things from other websites even amazon for cheaper but i'm a small business you want to support nail dad because nail dad gives you good information and videos like this yes support me does amazon do nail videos no they don't <laughs> Uh, this is a uh, OM15B by Chisel. One, two, three. That's my three second rule for my monomer, okay? The moment you do that, that means that if you have the right ratio, the powder is going to be nice and medium, and you'll be able to work with it right away without worrying about it bleeding all over the place. This means that when I, when I move this powder down this nail, it's, it's going to be moving, if I lightly touch it, consistent you guys know what that means it means that the powder is not lumpy it's not going to be thin here uh thick there um it's going to be nice and even so consistency the consistency is even you know even distributed throughout the nail not to worry but you have to be very light with their brush and i, and I said this last night for the q a for those of you guys that you guys focus in my q a if you ask a question and I didn't, you didn't get an answer from me i missed it because i'm working come to my q a usually it's at 10 30 10 to 11 Eastern time, I'll start when I'm there, Eastern time, and it goes about an hour, hour and a half. I have a glass of wine, then you can ask questions, I read through every question, okay? So you can join me there and you can ask questions that, you, that I may have missed. Or do you wanna answer first about me? And like always, Denver, Vegas, and San Jose class are open for pre-enrollment. I will be posting the flyer up soon to fill up the class, especially Denver. Votino and Venus got some new designs for the West Coast. You guys are lucky, actually. Um, after our Atlanta class, we got, we got, we're teaching some new designs in Atlanta. But after Atlanta, we're going to actually devise some new products for you guys for the West Coast. For those first students at West Coast, you guys are actually very, very lucky. Latino's been working so hard for these new designs, guys. And I will be having a uh, a duel live with him probably one of this this week, one of these days, um, just to catch you guys up to say hi to West Coast. just remember don't overdo the thickness on these nails also they're secret tips um, sometimes you don't want to overdo them too thick can definitely take away from the look okay I have a hard time sizing secret tips um uh, melody cruz you can also watch the beginning of this video i'm gonna save this video guys for those guys that missed the beginning i do put these tips on um from beginning to end and i sh and i show you guys how to do the sizing a little bit so i definitely rewatch this okay for those of you guys that missed the beginning of the video don't worry all my content is saved here for you i would just appreciate the support you know watching the video like sharing get it out there more exposure get a little bubble there see that pop that bubble Reform it. Easy. Can I guess see my power my monomer is getting a little murky? This is contamination from the pigment and the acrylic. Now, when I'm cleaning my brush, I can't clean it completely, but I'm cleaning most of it off. And when I go back in for more monomer, I'm contaminating my monomer. Why is it that I recommend you guys do not use over 30 milliliters, just 15 at a time? Because I want you to save money. A lot of you guys are filling your dampening dish way too high. You're using too much monomer and you're contaminating too much of your, your source and you cannot reuse that, okay? That means that it's gonna be, have to be thrown out afterwards. There's a waste of money. Uh, my dampening dish are 30 milliliters to the top, 15, okay? 15 milliliters if you, at uh, half. 
So I recommend for you guys to start out at half first and work your way up. Now, eventually, eventually, if you can get a set done within about 30 milliliters, 15 to 30 milliliters, you've been efficient. That means that you've utilized the right amount of monomer per set. Now, some sets are shorter, you probably use 15. That's why I say start at 15 first. Because if you can finish in 15 because it's a shorter set, then that's amazing. You just save that much more money. That becomes very, very, very consistent and you definitely become more and more um, used to how doing it. Now, after we done with this monomer, what do we do? Yes, we throw away this monomer because there's no more using this for another set. This monomer has been contaminated. That means it doesn't work as well as it should. I'm making it work for the last nail here, but you have to understand, you have to understand your monomer management is definitely very important while doing nails also. Those of you guys are, you know, monomer is not cheap and price is always arranging, going up and down all the time. I wanna make sure that you guys save as much money as possible, utilize your products efficiently, okay? That's why I teach you guys how to take care of your brushes. So you guys take care of my brushes. If you have a nail dead brush, it should last you six months to a year. That means it should get its money's worth back. And then some. Hello? Did you ask Arthur? So, is he getting the kit? No, she's going to the kit go air yet. Yeah. Bye. Now we just finish up this last finger here. And I'll show you guys how to clean your brush, store your brush, so you can live to do another set another day. Now you guys see how my brush is getting sticky and sticky? This is from the monomer. The monomer is contaminated. So what it's gonna do is gonna add, instead of fresh monomer to my brush, it's gonna add a little bit of a, 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 a dirty monomer where it has a pigment or acrylic. So when I pick up powder, it's gonna stick to my brush a little bit. Now, I'm, I don't have any much work with left, so I'm, I can get away with it, but if you were, this amount is probably less than three to four milliliters. You can throw this out, look at the contamination, okay? See that gooeyness? That's from the excess. You have to throw that out. There's no saving this. There's no adding fresh monomer into this because you'll be contaminating your fresh monomer. You wouldn't use this to clean your brush. Now this is a fresh brush I just prepped earlier. So you see where I crimped the brush? I personally crimp all my brushes myself. That's what makes it unique. So you see that? This little, see that acrylic in there? This acrylic right now is from basically that dirty monomer bringing more and more acrylic to it. Now, if you don't pay attention to this and you actually don't let this sit, what's gonna happen is this, this acrylic is gonna harden. Once that hardens, you have a ruined brush. This is why this is your chance to check through your brush. Now this one got a little beat up more than usual because I just prepped this brush because it's more full. But I'm gonna slowly feather my finger through it and I'm gonna feel the acrylic and I'm gonna, and it's still wet. So I'm gonna slowly just pinch it and push it out. So just make sure you do these steps and, and maybe your brush may not be as dirty as mine, but this is a worst case scenario right now that I have acrylic in my brush that's still wet. So I'm gonna keep doing that rinse and repeat a few times. Okay, take your time because you want your brush to be completely clean. The last thing you want to do is have your brush sealed up on you in the next client, okay? When you feather through, you see that? How it's sticking together? Then you know there's acrylic in there. You see that? There's acrylic there. There's no acrylic here. See that? Feathers through. That's how you figure that out. So now I just slowly use my hand and I just nudge. I'm not pulling, I'm not pulling on the bristles, okay? I'm kind of like doing like this. I'm rubbing it. So I'm rubbing it sideways, that means it gives it the ability to me to find the acrylic and I'll be able to put light pressure and push up. I'm not pulling the hair out, okay? I'm holding right here, but I'm just nudging it here. See that? I just remove that acrylic. That's how you remove excess acrylic, okay? And you rinse, repeat, and look at that monomer. Going into good use, right? Not completely throwing it out, per se. A lot of you may be like, oh, this is a waste of time. No, it's not. This is important. Now look at this, the difference. Now you know that your brush is free of acrylic. 
it means that you'll be able to reshape, reform this brush and reuse it. And when you break it open, now I just crimped this brush, so I'm gonna reform it just like so. And if I keep doing this, my brush is consistently gonna stay this shape. When you first crimp it, when you first clean it, it's not gonna be flat like this. It's gonna have a poofiness to it because it's a fresh brush. Eventually over time, you start training the brush. This is my nail dead 14. Um, they will, hopefully all the brushes will be back in stock by the end of this month, if not sooner. And there you go guys, a little bit of brush maintenance. And the rest of this, I can just throw away. In paper towel. Make sure you clean all the bottom because sometimes you get this clear residue under here that you may not see. And, and then it's actually acrylic that your next monomer is gonna get contaminated. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Just kidding, we still got a lot to go. So now I'm gonna use a 100 by 100 grit hand filer. I ran out of mine, but these ones will just have to do. Just using, just about to use our brand. <laughs> so, all of our shapes. that I'm gonna bring the sides in nice and taper just like so I'm not gonna do too much work because all my work's already been done for me see just like so just like that Bringing it in. I just want to make sure this underneath is cleared and also my sides are cleared. Remember, earlier my application is very, very thin. I'm not thin, but even. So that means that I don't have to shape a lot. My shape is already there. I shape with my acrylic brush. I always preach this, but the hand filer is not for shaping. The hand filer is for making your shape more crisp. Your majority of the time when you're shaping should be done with your acrylic application process, okay? So the more you shape, actually, the more you take away. Mm, I'm just gonna check some through some comments. I almost ordered about a week ago, and I got scared. I was slicing my. <laughs> um, you can get the safety bit if you're not if you worry about the sharp bit. Do, do, do. And another way I've seen people do is bleed, bleed the back of their brush, the paper towel. Yeah, deleting the back of your brush on the paper towel, um, it's, it's just to slow down your process, uh, the, the process, but I'll probably talk about that in another day, how that technique is good and bad. Not good, it's, it's good and it is not necessary, but people still use it, it's, it's not bad actually. I can't speak on that right now because he. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. That's a love card. Thank you, Marie Moore. If I knew Chisel was affordable and good quality, I would never have bought the top. <laughs> I, I joke actually is a little bit more cheaper if you get them at their, their sale, but Chisel is very, very affordable. Um, and the quality is very, very amazing. <laughs> I'm going be honest with you. <laughs> It'd be hard for me to produce a product like Chisels if I ever come out with my own line. That's why it's probably one of the reasons why I don't have my own acrylic yet. But eventually that'll be my last stepping stone, guys. When I've accomplished everything I needed in this this this, you know, industry for my, you know, career and I'm like, you know what, I need to have my own acrylic. That's when I'm gonna launch my own acrylic. It's like butter, yeah. Yeah, my monomer will make any powder like butter.
So that's the next best thing, right? If you have a monomer that works really well, um, just gotta tweak the ratio and gotta tweak the timing. You'll be able to work like butter also. It's not always the powder. The monomer definitely, be two, it takes two to tango, okay? You can't have acrylic without monomer. I just noticed I'm only spending like what, maybe 15, 20 seconds per nail, if not 30 seconds per nail. I'm not trying to file too much because it's not, I'm not needed. I'm, I don't need to. I already did that work through my application, so why am I gonna sit here and file? And there you go, my shaping. I'm gonna go through and hand file in a little bit, and then I'm gonna definitely gonna do some cuticle work with like sharp five and one bit. John, when doing ombre, should the lighter color be towards the cuticle? Um, when doing ombre, the less dominant color should be on the bottom. The more dominant color should be on top. Because you can't, uh, so yes, like most of the time it's the pink, the nude should be towards the cuticle area. Um, you should have, but you're not gonna be doing like, uh, you know, a light nude over uh, a black. You gotta make sure that the base color is a pastel color something that your your nude your pink your pink and your nude has to be a cover basically that means that it's a pastel there's a lot of pinks and nudes that are not pastel they're clear so they're not going to be able to ombre over you guys got to understand that there's a lot that goes into the ombre technique you have to know what color wise too it's not just simple it's just putting a lighter color on top you have to make sure that color can cover that that bottom color so always the less dominant color it should be on the bottom dominant is in pastel means that what can cover what? The more darker pigmented the color is, the harder it is to ombre. I'm usually black and whites, black and reds, you require a very good handling of the powder and technique to be able to do those ombres. Um, a lot of beginners who get into this industry and they think they can just run into red and white ombre, red and black ombre right away. Yeah, you're, you're mistaken. And then they struggle and then they're like, why is this happening? It's because you just don't have the proper understanding and technique to accomplish this advanced ombre yet. That's why a lot of people start with uh, a white and a nude or a soft white and nude and pink. That's why pink and white ombres are very popular. It's, it's very nice and elegant and it's a good way to start out practicing how to do your blends and controlling your powder. Okay? Don't be jumping into ombre the first time thinking you're gonna be doing, you know, black and white and black and nude or like black and um, red, all those like pigmented colors. You're gonna set yourself up for failure and then you're gonna wonder why. Then I have to be the one to tell you the bad news that you just can't do it yet. Remember, the width of the nail with C-curve tips depends on the thickness of the sides. So the thickness also adds to the width. Be careful with that, okay? Hey, Yogi, how are you? supposed to have the same length like the pinky and the thumb yes yes they are see you measure cuticle to cuticle okay pinky is also going to be smaller so it's going to be a little bit longer but in general it's not so now i'm going to do a little bit of hand filing this is just a little bit of quicker way for me to do Yes, a lot of you guys probably don't even understand how to do that. Um, I'm making the pinky and everything the same size. Yes, they're all generally supposed to be the same length. I'm hand filing because my application is very smooth, so this is a little bit quicker way for me to break it down. I'll go back there with the drill bit in a second, but it'll be less work for my drill bit, okay? My drill bit is metal, so if I try to drill in this, I might make it worse 
But with this hand file, I'm actually a little bit, have more control. I'm going to go to the sides like this. Oh, hello. Thank you. My Your favorite nail tech. Hey, Andre Marin. How long is it taking me to do the music for full set? Mm -hmm. If I'm not living, it takes me probably under an hour, 30 minutes at sometimes. When I live, I actually stop, read comments, check if you have, you know, angles right. So it definitely takes a little bit out of my time. But when I'm when I'm not living, it's actually I'm really fast. I knock them out pretty much under an hour, any full set. I'm 30 minutes if I'm not doing too much designs. My application process probably only takes me about 10 minutes. And that's just to say that my mas my application mastery has been, is at its peak. It's not the best, but it's at its peak. You know, I'm on par with a lot of the top applicators out there. So yes, I can speed up a lot of my sets through that. Well, nail brush is your favorite. It's definitely mine. <laughs> now that Studios brush is the fan favorite. It's funny, because like my brushes, they're never in stock for long. Maybe like what, for what, a day, a week? I, I think a week is the longest my brush has ever been in stock. Um, the fastest my brush has been ever sold out was 500 brushes in two hours. <laughs> So yeah, um, even I couldn't. Even, you know, you know how you know how hard it was for me to get a brand new fourteen brush, guys. I had to actually had the team hide it. It looks so good. Thank you so much, Sonia. Appreciate it, guys. Now, this is just me doing the base of the nail, okay? Later, I have to go through my cuticle bit and I have to do my cuticle work also. That's important. I have to have the cuticle work, okay? See that? How much surface area I have? Cuticle work is very important. That's the key, fundamental. Yeah, they're already sold out right now, but um, they'll be back in stock this month. I don't know. So I'm definitely going to put a limit on two per person this time. I don't want people to go too crazy, and I want to sure, make sure everybody that needs it gets one, especially for my students also. When you get another orders of brush in, um, probably uh, end of this month, they'll be coming in. I wish I could do nails as good. No, don't wish. You can do better. It just takes time. I have experience over you. I can't even flex. You know, it's hard for someone that doesn't know. Imagine someone that been doing nails for a long time, going to a, to a beginner and flexing. Hey, my nails are better than yours. Come on. <laughs> I would be embarrassed if I ever did that. If I ever went up to a beginner, I'm like, hey, my nails are better than yours. What the hell? Yeah, of course it's freaking better than mine. Uh, I'm a beginner. You've been in the industry for more than 10 years. If anything, if it wasn't better than that's new news, it should be old news. Is that why I never understood how people flex? I think that'd be embarrassing if you try to flex on a beginner or someone that's less experienced than you.
I love all his brushes. <laughs> yeah. A lot of you guys have a whole collection of my brushes. In the last few years. Yep, I crimped them myself, so. <laughs> it's crazy. But brush prices is gonna be going up once this new batch come in because of Kalinsky prices went up recently. Fortunately. It's very right. I definitely need to practice more and have more time to do now. Do my best. Yes. Think of yourself five years from now, not what where you're at right now. If anybody, if, if you ever enter any industry and, and you think of yourself where you're at right now, of course, it's not going to be the best, right? <laughs> you're new, fresh meat. Welcome to the grinder, you know? Welcome to the industry. You're probably going to get hazed on your way in, but... Five years from now, you may be a whole different nail tech. Maybe you might not be, be in the industry anymore. But don't overthink, don't overwork yourself, okay? Do you only encapsulate designs or in color nails? I don't, um, I don't encapsulate at all. I only encapsulate when I do um, any design that requires me to encapsulate, like glitters or something like that. But um, generally, um, I use uh, powders that are mixed proper, uh, mixed uh, good, as in like you know prop uh, like a ratio to a pigment to a quick ratio. So I don't require to pro to cap. A lot of capping requires if you're using a high pigmented powder, which doesn't dry, it requires you to cap with clear. Capping is not necessary. Okay, I don't cap. That's not my style, not my technique. So I like to do my application once. I don't want to do go back through and do my application twice just because the powder i never understood what people actually do that so i don't know teach his own it's just not my style could you sew the inside of the nail and see the thickness of course i could there you go a credit card to a credit card and a half thickness okay i can show you guys the side profile look at that I finally got my black gel paint and the white and silver finally have all the colors. Oh, okay, dude, you're gonna love the new black. How about thin layer under bright colors? No, you don't need that too. Um, that misconception of people saying that you need to put a thin layer of clear acrylic because of a bright colors will stain the nail bed is false. Uh, acrylic color does not stain the nail bed. Color acrylic does not stain the nail bed. Not that I've ever experienced in my 15 years of doing nails. People do that so they can drill off color acrylic so they can do refills over different colors. I don't do that, it takes too long. But time it takes me to do that, I'd rather just soak off and do a new set. That's just me though. Everybody has different style techniques, okay? To each their own. Nothing wrong about where, how I do it, nothing wrong about how other people do it either as long as it works for them, okay? not wrong it's just maybe not for you just how how i'm doing it maybe it's not for them there you go nice and now i'm gonna go through with my five and one this is the i have this in the medium also medium is great but i'm gonna use the fine this time five and one cross cut sharp bit and this is how I'm gonna do my cuticle work, okay? So pay attention here. Your way makes more sense and more efficient. <laughs> hmm. I didn't, I, I didn't say that, Kira. You said that, okay? Yes, you hear what Kira said? My way makes more sense and it's more cost efficient. Now they're trying to save you money and efficiency? No. That's literally my whole platform. Save you money, make you more efficient. Um, curious, have you ever tried Paul Gel? I haven't, it's not my style. Um, I don't do that. Uh, what's the question mark for Tara Anderson? Just question marks? What can I do to stop my natural from bending backwards? It hurts. Um, that's definitely an issue you probably have, probably with wearing nails or 
I don't know. I can't do it. I, I have no uh, take on that. That's more of a natural nail thing. I recommend maybe vitamins to make sure you're strengthening your nails and not adding product on your nails too much. I've never had an issue with the bending backwards, so I can't help you there. Sorry, Tara. And we have to blend the nail out to make sure it's aesthetically pleasing. Okay, y'all. Yeah. See that? How the acrylic is growing from the cuticle. I'm gonna use my drill bit to smooth out the surface. Remember, I used this for hand filing earlier already. See how easy it is for me to go through it? Fairly easy, right? No resistance at all. I already hand filed this earlier. This is just me smoothing it out. So I have to do less buffing later, that's all, okay? And generally, this is good enough, right there. Best brushes to purchase, my brushes when they're in stock. It's probably one of the best investments you can make. I actually stand by my brushes because I have very little to no complaints with my brushes at all. Sometimes we get factory defects here, factory defects here and there, but I definitely take care of that issue. Um, but generally, everybody that's used my brushes loved it. I haven't used it for a long time. A lot of people even had the first generation brushes. You know, they last you. Yeah, you can, I guess one, you can follow and support the Nail Dad Instagram. I would appreciate that. I appreciate your support and the content. Also, comment, like, bookmark, and share my Instagram posts. Um, I'm doing more giveaways soon. I just sent out the last giveaway winner, their stuff. So I might do another giveaway collaboration with another, um, with one of some of my partners. Um, you guys don't miss it, so it's on Instagram. And it's very fast, a few days. Not even a week, and I know it's a winner, okay? So definitely take advantage of that and stop by. The Instagram link is pinned below. Follow, like, share. Make sure you turn up the alert so that you can see the post. That's important. Sometimes you may be following, but you may not be able to see the post. Turn up that alert setting. Like that. That's all we need. This is a sharp bit. That's why I'm able to get in that cuticle like that. You see that? With that state board saying that wooden brush is not sanitary, how are we going forward? We're going forward. Just go forward. These aren't really wooden. These are um, plastic. Um, styrofoam. Every state board is different though in different states though. You have to make, you have to understand that. The state board of Colorado is different from the state board of California it's from the state board of um, Florida, okay? You have to understand the state board limits what you do on natural nails. We're, we, I'm working on acrylics. So some of this stuff does not really pertain to me. I'm not, filing, I'm not filing on the natural nails. I'm filing on acrylic. So, <laughs> there's that. This speed is about a 13. You're not going to do this at a 13, okay? You're going to do it at a 9. At a 13, you're going to cut somebody. 
I'm doing a 13 because I've been doing this for a thousand times, years and years and years. So yes, 13 is my speed, but your speed might not be 13. This is not something you can replicate, okay? This is something you go at your own speed, your own. When the size are going to be available? <laughs> right now, I only have 16. Um, I will try to work on the 32, okay? Appreciate your patience, guys. Maybe the gallon in the future. Thank you, Joanna Votaro. No meds, my nails break. Yeah, and NC, I just finished school, but we just, we just find most everybody had one. Yeah, I mean, the state board will say this and that, but no, well, good luck, good luck up there. But most of the hand files are not wooden, anyways. They're um, styrofoam and plastic and sanding paper. The wooden ones are very old school. Those are like the wood emery board. Because wood gets wet and it has bacteria in it. So you guys understand. Let's say if you get your, if you're working on a natural mannequin and you get some water onto your, you get some water on there. Yes, the wood gets wet and it can grow mold and bacteria. So that, of course that's going to be unsanitary. But plastic and styrofoam doesn't do that. Because wood filers are definitely more expensive to produce than the styrofoam ones, so I highly doubt most places will be switching over or not. Cuticles nice and flushed. So important. That's where the lifts come from, guys. The lifts come from the cuticle area, right? When it starts growing out, right? So when you flush that down, what do we have? A non lift zone. There's a no fly zone for lifts. No lifts here. Sounds like you need some vinyls now. That's for your work. I've learned so much since the pandemic and started doing my own nails. You're welcome, Sabrina White. Do your own nails. Someday you might even make a career out of it. I'm bringing the next generation of nail techs into this industry through my classes and everything. Cuticle work is not something you can mimic. You guys can see the way I'm doing it, but you guys have to do it yourself and have to slowly, 
you know, create your own style, okay? And get used to it. It's muscle memory. What I'm doing right now is muscle memory. I've been doing it so much that my hands are so used to it. So don't be discouraged if you can't do it like this yet. It takes time to build muscle memory, technique, consistency, okay? Consistency, technique, and muscle memory. Three keys to doing anything that has skill, tra skill crafting, you know? When you learn a new skill, you gotta learn it, how to do it right. You gotta replicate it over and over and over until what? You get down, then you gotta rinse and repeat, make sure you get the same product over and over. So just pretend like each one of these nails is a product. And you do the same technique to produce the same product over and over, 10 times. Every time you do cuticle work or drill work, you have 10 fingers to be able to get your product better and better, get your results better and better. And of course, my application helped out because I didn't flood the cuticle, so less work for me in the cuticle area. In return, I'll be able to get in and out faster. My sets are actually being finished quicker because of my application. That's why application is such an important technique, important skill that you should have and always to be the one that you should focus on the most. It will help you so many ways, so many ways. From shaping, drilling, When are you coming to California as close as you? Um, California, I'm coming to California, San Jose, California in July. So DM me for that information. I think you've been asked that, but Joanne Rotaro, you've been waiting for California classes. Yeah. Check my, I can recommend a good e-file. Mine is a new one for us. Um, you can spend some money and get a medical pro power 20K. And medical is probably one of the best drills out there. You can invest about $300 into it. You're good to go. My apartment always smells like mom or like finally relaxed me. I wish I could have that. <laughs> wow. Your apartment smells like mom or your neighbors don't complain? be careful with that make sure you ventilate okay and the smell is not harmful but too much of it can do some damage to you be careful too much of anything will be strenuous on the body okay here buffing the design that's it remember we're taking down some thickness for this so our shapes gonna be a little bit more crisp that's very normal we're not gonna take it down too much though okay see the side water here good Let's come to California. I'll try to go as far as pressing the um, six girls. Yeah, I am. I I'm already coming to California. The class has already been announced. Is you have to DM me for that information, okay? I'm gonna be in San Jose, California, for a class in July. It's not about yes, come or not. Um, it's already been announced. There's already students in that class.
I'm going to finish up the thumb shortly. We're going to buff. And before that, I'm going to show you how I clean underneath first um, to make sure that I'm free of any excess. I'm very picky with the underbody. I hate it when I see side, side profile pics and there's like excess underneath. It's so annoying to me because you spent all this time and the, and the nail look good. And then now underneath you have acrylic stuck in here and there. I feel like it takes away from the set so much. This drill bit, guys, get this drill bit. This will change your life. You are, if you don't, can't use a sharp one, there's a safety version of this. Okay, the, the edges are a little bit more rounder, you won't cut, but same side, it works the same, okay? Work your way up to the safety version, uh, the sharp version. I have this in the fine and the medium. Safety, fine, safety, medium. Sharp, fine, sharp, medium. Get them both. Practice. The medium is a little more grittier. It gives you more um, breakdown. Whatever works best for you, okay? The safety one is it's like the training, the training wheels word version of the sharp one. Once you have the training wheel version and you start using it more and you're getting used to it, then you start slowly incorporating the sharp one in and getting used to the sharp one. And once you get used to the sharp one, I guarantee you, your lips, Nail retention will increase by, your lips will decrease by half, and nail retention by more than that. So when I'm done, I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna check underneath, underbody. Any excess, I'm gonna remove. Just like that. Generally, I don't have that much because I really did my application really well. But for you guys that have all the excess underneath, now is the time for you to go underneath and just clean it, okay? Get rid of that. It's very ugly. It gets stuck on stuff. Yes, I used mine for the first time yesterday and it shows the difference, the side corners, giggles, I love it. You're welcome, Sonia. Thank you for the support. I told you guys, whatever I sell, it's just good. Now, guys, this is a simple buff. Side wall, clean up. Voila, we have a nice structured set. C curve. This is about a long, not XL. XL that I left the tip on earlier, but I cut it down, so it's about a long. There you guys go. Foundation. It's very key. It's paramount, actually. It's paramount. The consistency of the foundation. Every finger, okay? This is consistency. This means that I did the same thing over and over and over. Every finger on each hand. So my nails are all gonna stay consistent. Not one's gonna break. If they're all gonna be break, they're gonna all break. If they all stay on, they all stay on, okay? Please understand. This is very rudimentary, very basic techniques. And wash your hands. But I've honed these techniques for years. You know? I'm now gonna do a white. White and hot pink cow print design and all that stuff that she wants. Ugh, she wants hot. She wants cow prints. Hot pink cow prints. Jesus. Let's see some of these comments here. 
Thank you. Yes, foundation. Yeah, you know it. Now that's all about foundation. I know you come to Atlanta, Georgia, but when you when you come close and I will see and see. Um, if you are in North Carolina, I may or may not do a private class in NC. Um, depending. Um, truly, I will probably do. I think I think a lot of North Carolina, South Carolina people are asking. I will set up a private class at some point in NC, and I will announce it at some point. I'm not gonna make any promises right now, but I will try. Okay. So please um, bear with me. I have a very busy schedule and I'll make sure everybody's happy, but I will be going West Coast tour um, this coming up couple months. And if I do have time in between, I will visit NC for a private class. Foundation always flawless. Thank you, Jasmine Perry. So I've been using my white gel. This is art gel. I'm using this hot pink from my my collection set. I will be putting these on sale probably soon. They are on sale now. You get from one forty for for twelve colors. That's actually a pretty good deal. This will last you forever. I've had this set for almost three four months now. Oh, where is that at? There it is. So I've been using my liner brush, my strapper brush. These brushes will be back in stock probably in a week or two. Um, these are the longer ones. You see, when I use it, I didn't clean it. Keep it nice and short. I'll clean it right now. Just a little, a little acetone. And I'm going to clean it as much as I can. So you want these two to have the, the conference or these two? Mm, I don't know. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I hate you. See your phone. I want to take a picture of this. Mm -hmm. Airdrop the simulator. For my nails? Yes. Ever to come and see it definitely be in that class. Uh, I think a lot of people will be in that class, the NC class, but I will see. I've been I'm getting a lot of requests for this. A lot of people from NC. This is a pigmented art gel, as you guys can see. Gives me the ability to do very pigmented things. Let's run for the outline first there. I'll go back through and fill that in later. And this 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 gel will be so precise it is. It's gonna stay like that. So now I want to use my flat brush. Ooh, there's so much black in here. I'll grab a little bit of this pink. I'm just gonna fill in this. Uh, the reason why we use gel paint because guys look you do not lose your shape 
okay? And you don't have to do another coat. It's a very nice, thick. These are on sale right now. I'm on netashop.com. You get a set of six neon, six pastel. They're very amazing. Take advantage of that. I put them on sale for my students, but anybody can benefit from it. Now you can, if you messed up, you can actually go back through and redo the, some lines. But I didn't really mess up, so I'll do some finer details. So I'm gonna go through and clear this first and do the other hand, and I'll do the other designs. The same thing from here. Set my little guidelines first. And if you gotta mark the tip, to know where you're gonna end, just mark it. But generally, I don't really do that. So like you'd mark it, then you'd have like a guideline to know where to go to. You got the focal point. Oh my God, now family, I had a lady said, to me, she feels like it's like for cheap hoes. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. She, she never met the cheap hoes I work on. They spend a lot of money. Yeah, sometimes it's best to, eye, uh, to mark things. Don't eyeball everything. I eyeball because I'm just freaking lazy, y'all. This brush right here, all these brushes are from the same company that makes my acrylic brushes. This is Kalinsky. This is why you can use this brush and paste this on so nice. This is why whenever you guys see that when my brushes are out of stock, both of them are because they're made from the same company. I do not go cheap on my art brushes also. They are Kalinsky art brushes. The brush quality is the same as my acrylic brushes because you know why? It absorbs, it's very soft, it's not plastic. Okay, I'm done with the pink for now. Moving on to the white. We are gonna do some, we're gonna do a white base.
my white has been reformulated, so is my black. They're so amazing, guys. They're sold separately, though. White, black, gold, silver, rose gold, they're sold separately. I'm gonna cure this and probably do another coat. You can see the difference in this and gel polish. Gel polish by now would have bled all over the place. This is art gel. It won't bleed. It just stays where it's needed. Okay? Big difference. Mm -mm. Keep touching that spot with my finger. You have to get this gel paint. It's available right now. It's back in stock. I'm just doing another coat just for good measure. Mm -hmm. Ah! Make sure I redefine this line, make sure it's nice and straight. It's just the foundation process before we add the cow print. 
Make sure you do this properly, okay? Don't skip on this this process. You skip on this, you're gonna regret it later because this makes everything look the way it looks. Don't be lazy now. Make sure everything is properly done beforehand. So you don't have any issues later with your product, your finished product. Just gonna make sure this line's nice and straight. Just like that. I'm filling this a little bit more, and then we're gonna go right into the outlining, and then the cow print's gonna be last. I'm gonna save the cow print for last. The cow print's gonna go on these two white nails right here. Okay. So our cow print's gonna go on the last these two fingers, so I'm gonna do my outlining first. I should be very careful with this. Nice swoop motion. One brush stroke. And there we go. Like I said, I wasn't done with this. You hold your breath because I taught you to hold. I taught you to hold your breath in class, Jasmine. Right? I taught you to hold your breath in class, right? When you do line work, that's why you hold your breath, right, Jasmine? All my students in this lab are probably just sitting there holding their breath. <laughs> yes, that means you're well taught. You remember your lessons well. Hold your breath, okay, when you do line work. Very important process of doing line work, holding your breath. The longer you hold your breath, the more steady your hands is. 
What do you guys think? A little bit of freestyle here. Cute, right? I think so. Thank you guys for being patient with me. I'm a little quiet during this because I'm a little more focused. Appreciate everybody holding their breath with me, rooting for me. <laughs> You have to breathe, okay, guys? You guys can hold your breath and support, but it doesn't mean you have to actually hold your breath. You gotta breathe, breathe, okay? I want people passing out watching Nail Dad Lives now. <laughs> so focused on this video, forgot to breathe. It's like you're actually here doing this, right? That's the experience I want to give you guys. Almost immerse yourself into the video. That's because I stop breathing while you're doing that. <laughs> silly. Silly, silly, silly gals. Mm -mm -mm. So now I'm gonna do some cow printies. Okay. Oh, yeah. Sao Let me see that picture again. 
see what the other one looks like. What time is it? What time is it? 3.53. Oh, really? Ran that far? Mm. Almost finished here, just slice two fingers, then we're gonna top coat and we're good to go. First I'm gonna matte first before I top coat though. Matt will protect the polish a little bit, then I'll top coat make sure it doesn't bubble. Dude. The cow print looks like a person's face. <laughs> ah, look like a silhouette of a girl. That's, 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 I like that. Cow print is just random. Don't overthink it or it's going to look stupid. Trust me, I've done it before myself. Okay. I try to make cow prints look like cow prints. It didn't look like cow prints. But then I started just putting shit on there. It looks like cow prints. Take it how you will, but that's literally how I did cow prints.
that's how long the set was. Thanks for your patience. I'm gonna put this away. I'm not gonna clean my brush. Leaving the, everything on there. Just gonna be putting stuff in. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a matte top coat on first to protect everything, and then I'm gonna put a top coat on. And that's my finished product. Smooth everything out. Sometimes gel is very smooth. You wanna put a matte top coat on just so you can protect that a little bit. You know what? I'm possibly gonna to wanna to put some silver trimming in this. Silver collection, too. This gives me a little bit of separation here. shorter in there. Okay. Tao xuống hết rồi nè. Okay.
That's when I need to, to separate that. And back to Maddie. Get to see how this looks matted. Very thin coat of matte, because I'm gonna put top right on top of this mat here. Now this seems redundant to put matte top coat on first, but um, you guys see what I mean. Sometimes it looks better matted. I wanted to make the top coat that's silver shiny easily done take a little bit of top coat line it over that silver just so that silver spot will pop out e. 